we are continuing on the series we started last Sunday morning entitled Deeper. Someone say Deeper. And I, I really sense that God's saying, all right, it's time to take us out of the shallow. Come on, somebody. We've been, we've been, we've been, uh, we've been in the shallow a little, for a little too long. And that's okay if you're just beginning. It's all right. You got to dip your toe in a little bit and get shallow. But I'm here to uh, encourage you guys that there is another level that you can actually go deeper. Come on, somebody. Uh, and I made a couple of statements last Sunday, and I said to you guys that it's in the deep where you find what you're looking for. All right. Another thing that I said, I said, it's in the deep where you'll find fulfillment in your calling. It's in the deep where you're going to find satisfaction with your walk with God. Now, some of us may be at a certain level of deepness. Others may be at a deeper level of deepness. But wherever it is that you're at right now, guys, I want to encourage you again, you can go deeper. Amen. Come on, somebody. You can go deeper. You will never exhaust. You will never exhaust the, the, the highest level or get to the highest level in God while we're down here on this earth because there's always more. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. That there are some things on this earth that God hasn't even revealed to us that we are not going to hear till we get there in his presence. Because God is like, he is inexhaustible. Yeah. Praise God. But I'll tell you this, he is more than enough for us to be able to function on this earth. In whatever endeavor that we set our minds to do, God is more than enough. And he can take you there. So don't ever feel like, well, this is all to my life. This is it. No, no, no. There's breakthroughs upon breakthroughs. Come on. There is faith to faith. There is glory to glory. Praise God. There is always growth that needs to be happening. We can go from immature to mature. Come on. We can go from shallow to deep. Come on, somebody. We can go from small to big. Come on, somebody. Praise God. And I'm telling you, it can get better. Your marriage can get better. Well, I've been married for 52 years. How's it going for you? Ah, it's okay. It's okay. Wait a minute. Hold on. It should be getting better every year because your relationship with God is getting better every year. Come on. Amen. You can get deeper. You can take it deeper. Watch what Ephesians 3, 16 and 17 says. And Paul said this in the book of Ephesians. He said, I pray that God would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory. Where is it at? Okay, hold on, hold on. And I pray that he would unveil within you. Unveil within you. That means he doesn't have to put anything inside you. It's already in there. Ooh, come on, somebody. I better get this. I didn't know that I had that in me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You do. That's why you come to church. Watch this. I was telling this to our men's group the other night. I said, guys, listen, when you read this Bible, you're just not learning about God. You're learning about you. Why? Because Jesus is in you and you are in him. So the, the closer or the more you know about God, the more you're going to know about you. Why? Because you're made in his image, in his likeness. And you've got to get to that point. Come on, somebody. You got to break through past the whole limitations of the flesh, the whole limitations of the training that this world gave us when we didn't know Jesus. All those things right there, they're limited, guys. And if I can say this, the world at its deepest is shallow. Can I say it again for some of those sitting in the back? I said the world at its deepest is shallow. Okay? It's immature. At its highest state of maturity, it's immature. So the more you keep of trying to be out there in that place, the less you're going to find maturity, the less you're going to find deepness. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Am I talking to some church folk up in here or some people of faith? All right. Watch this. So, and I pray, God, Paul said again, that he would unveil within you what's in there, what's in you, the unlimited riches of his glory and favor. Do you hear this? That they, oh, I don't know what to pray. Why don't you start with this one right here? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you are unveiling within me 
your unlimited riches of glory and favor. Well, nobody favors me because you haven't discovered that on the inside yet. But you come to a church where they're going to teach you this is in you. You ain't got to go buy it at Walmart. They don't have favor at Walmart. How much is it? Is it on sale? Did you roll back them prices today for that favor? No. No, ain't no roll back prices. This is a full, praise God, manifestation of his riches and glory and favor. Come on, man. He didn't make you and create you halfway. He didn't halfway do it. He didn't say, oh, it's middle of the He didn't say that. He didn't say, oh, I forgot about Bo, man. Oh, my gosh, Bo. I'm sorry, Bo. I left favor out, man. No, he didn't. When he breathed into your nostrils, this came with it. Somebody better say amen to this like you understand what I'm saying. Because some of y'all are about to go into another level, and you have to get into another level if you're going to want to reach that full satisfaction and full fulfillment. If you're going to want to reach the deeper level of faith, you're going to have to understand this. Because if not, all you're going to be dependent is on your own self and what you know to do and what you've been educated to do. And, but that ain't enough. Oh, my gosh. Come on, somebody. That ain't enough to take you to where you need to get to, especially in the deep things of God, where you find what you're looking for, where you find fulfillment, where you find satisfaction, where you find it, you don't have to be thirsty. Y'all know what I'm talking about that, all right? Where you find where you ain't got to be hungry for the things of this world. Where you find true satisfaction in your relationship with God and God alone. So say amen like y'all understand what I'm saying. Let's do it by faith. And I pray that he would unveil. I mean, she's going to unveil. Surprise, 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 Gomer Powell. Come on, Gomer Powell. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I mean, our younger generation like, what you talking about? Gomer Powell, who is that? Y'all 45 and above, you understand what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> you would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and fairness. Don't say, I got that. Don't say, I got that. Turn your neighbor and say, you got that. Turn your other neighbor and say, you got that. Stop playing around. Stop playing church. Praise God. Know who you are. Figure it out here. I mean, don't figure it out. Faith it in. Unlimited riches of his glory and favor until, watch this, until that he would unveil the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Boom! You got dynamite on the inside of you guys. You're fully loaded. Come on, where? Well, I don't know if I can. No, no, Paul already told you, you can do all things. Why? Because of this. You have this within you, folks. You, you can't be blaming somebody else because you can't reach a certain destiny. No, no, no. You don't blame anybody else. You got to blame yourself for not getting into the deep, praise God, and getting a hold of what you need. Looking for love and all. Yeah, you are looking for love in all the wrong places out there, but you got to look for it inside you. You are carriers of this, praise God, man. Come on. My gosh. Well, I need, I need to go to the doctor to get healed. You need to go to the great physician and get your healing. I need to go look for another job so that I can get richer. No, no, no. You need to go into the unlimited riches of his glory and favor. Did you know favor, guys? Favor will get you what money can't. Some of you in here think you need to get a higher education to get somewhere. Now, I'm not saying not to. We, we, some of us need to, but you don't need to. <laughs> okay, you don't. You really don't. Because God's favor on the inside of you will get you past doors that somebody else can't get through. You think he can't? He unlocked some prison doors for some praisers that were locked up in prison in the book of Acts. Some praisers, they didn't need money to get out of prison. They just needed a praise in their heart. They needed a praise in their mouth so that the Lord could. And you know who opened those doors? Some angels came through there. 
You know, you got angels on assignment personally for you. You got personal angels on your life that will unlock doors in whatever prison you think you're in. Praise God. Or whatever prison the world has put you in or whatever prison your emotions have put you in. Your praise can unlock those doors. Really, what your praise does is cause the angels to come and <laughs> follow me. Let's go. Don't listen to that jailer. Don't worry about him. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> See, y'all, y'all guys think Christianity is just coming to church and sitting here and receiving a good, beautiful word. And then you leave it at your seat and then go home and try to figure life out. You guys are carrier of your own breakthrough. You guys are carriers of your own miracles. You guys are carriers of your own healing. Look at that divine might and explosive power. That's why, listen, this word is important for us because this is how we function. You know, you got people that say, man, you know, I just want somebody to love me. And I'm like, well, who are you? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm a Mexican from the barrio. You know? Address 224-33. Wait. No, you're not. You're more than that. How can you expect somebody to love somebody that you don't even know who you are? Come on. I had a conversation with somebody the other day. I said, they were like, you know, I just want to know, is this the right person, man? Because I don't want to waste my time. I said, well, Matthew 6.33 will tell you what to look for. Matthew 6.33? Yeah, yeah. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. She's like, oh. I said, yeah, yeah, that's what you seek for in a person. That's how you know. Do they carry the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Because if they don't, don't seek that. Are you here? Because where is the kingdom of God? Jesus told the disciples, don't, don't listen to those that tell you that the kingdom of God is there. Don't listen to those that tell you that the kingdom of God is here. He said, for the kingdom of God is within you. If the kingdom of God is within you, then your partner better have the kingdom of God within them. <laughs> Somebody like, oh my gosh, boy, I'm getting revelated. Boy, why? When you get home, uh, honey, you're going to have to sleep outside in the back because you ain't got, no, I'm just kidding. No. Don't do that. Why would I say that to you guys? Because that's where you find it. It's not out here. It's not out here. It's in here. And you got to let the Lord unveil that. Está adentro. Amen. Praise God. Look at what verse 17 says. It says, then, by constantly using your faith. Okay, how am I using my faith? By believing what we just said. That you have it on the inside of you. That's how you constantly use your faith. See, you can't, you, you, nobody else can provide that for you. It's already inside. God has already provided it for you. Are you here? Now, somebody else can help you to discover that, like me, myself, here, like I just pointed it out. And some of y'all are like, wow, yeah, okay, that's it. But I ain't the one telling you that. I mean, I'm the one just reminding you of what you already have on the inside of you. God's the one that put it there for you. Amen. Amen. Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released where? Deep inside you. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Can I say this, guys, without hurting anybody's feelings? (laughs) Here we go. This is going to sound wrong, especially for the female section. (sighs) But your husband ain't the love of your life. All right, let's, let's, let's go on the other foot to see how many women. Your wife ain't the love of your life. Can I just say this? You don't want them to be the love of your life. Because some of y'all get frustrated with the love of your life. 
Sometimes you hate the love of your life. Sometimes you want to hit, well, <clears throat> sometimes you want to discipline the love of your life. <laughs> but take it higher. Make God the love of your life. And he'll trinkle down or he'll rain down or he'll pour down the love you actually need to take care of your wife. To take care of your husband, to take care of your children, to take care of your coworker, to take care of your staff. He is the love of your life. So say amen, like you, like you just switched it, like right now. I just learned that in church, and I just switched it in church. So, Ramiro, you're second. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so don't you be interrupting my time with the Lord. Husbands, don't do that. Seriously, don't interrupt their time with God. When I, when I see that Pastor Monique's in there reading her word, I don't even talk to her. I don't say nothing because she's spending time with the one I love spending time with too. I'm like, it's your time. Praise God. We're good. But when I'm over there praying, she's like, hey, go ahead and throw the trash. No, I'm just like, what are you interrupting me? Praise God. No, I'm just kidding. She, does, she doesn't do that. She does not. I'm just kidding. So, are we there with this? You understand that? Yeah. I have to put this out to you guys before we get to the next step here. Proverbs 4, 21, 22 says this. It says, fill your thoughts with worry. No? no? Oh, I thought that that's what we're supposed to do. Why? Because that's what we do. <laughs> fill your thoughts with perversion. No. Oh, no? Tampoco? Okay. Fill your thoughts with watching TV all night. I know some of y'all didn't like that one. Ay, pues, ¿por qué? Why are you messing with my TV? Okay. Fill your thoughts with how much food you're going to put into your body. That's no good for you. So, that one, too. Some of y'all are like, oh, don't mess with my food, bro. Don't mess with my tortillas. You know? No, no. Fill your thoughts with complaining. Fill your, no, it doesn't say that. It says, fill your thoughts with my words. My words. Until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Wow, really? Why, why, why would that be? Because it's the word that'll make you better. It's the word that'll make you look more like Jesus. It's the word that'll give you that power, that extraordinary power, that supernatural power, that supernatural strength, praise God, that ability, the capability, and the capacity to be able to fulfill the mandate on your life. I know, man, this sounds bad, but your family's second to the mandate. Your children are second to the mandate. Okay, y'all hear? Some people don't like that, but it is, though. It's truth. I had a conversation with somebody the other day. They were like, man, family can be fickle sometimes. Family can be funny sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Huh? That family was just a tribe that you were used to be born through. But God says you have a new family. You have a new bloodline. That bloodline is the blood of Jesus. That's the family of faith. Sometimes you can trust more the family of faith than your own family. But can I tell you this? God didn't make it for you to be dependent on your family. He made you to be dependent on him in every area of your life, in every area of your life. And you certainly are not to be dependent on this world. You hear me? You need satisfaction? You go to him. Come on. You need love? You go to him. You're lonely? You go to him. Come on. You need a breakthrough? Go to him. Don't go around for handouts, looking for handouts all the time. Who's going to help me today? The government? The church? My neighbors? My mom? My dad? Who's going to help me today? No, no, no. You, you don't need none of them. You go to him. And he'll get you to where you need to get to. Why? Because he's going to remind you of what's already on the inside of you. Hey, look to you. Boom. I got, I got what you need. 
Amen. Then as you unwrap my words, praise God. What? You unwrap the word? Yeah, because there's revelation in this word. Because this word right here is not just uh, uh, ink on paper. It looks like it is, but it's more to it than that. This word is spirit and life. You let it penetrate deep into your spirit. Now you connect to his spirit in his life. And now, boom, things begin to start moving out of you that don't belong in there. Like doubt and unbelief and all that. Then as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant health. Watch this. Into the very core of your being. Amen. There's a core to you guys. There's a core. There's an innermost being on the inside of you. Come on. Amen. There's more than meets the eye on the inside of you. But it, it comes out when you go deeper to the word. Amen. Come on, somebody. Let's give God a praise on that. All right. That was just the, uh, that was just the opening. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that was just a review from last Sunday. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go into this. Let's go into today's thing. All right. Now, so we're talking about deeper. Somebody say deeper. deeper. So what's the opposite of deep? Shallow. Shallow. Right? Uh, the opposite of deep is shallow. Another one is superficial. You know what superficial means? It means it's not deep. You know, the medical field, sometimes when they look at cuts, they'll, they'll call it, is that a deep cut? There's another word for that. Or is it superficial? And superficial means, well, we don't, need to put, uh, we don't need to put sutures to that. We don't need to put stitches. It'll heal on its own. We can put a little monkey blood. Is that what it's called, monkey blood? I don't know what it is. Antibiotics, whatever it is. Some of y'all bunky blow. Well, anyways, that's old school stuff right there. All right. So you got uh, uh, the, the opposite of deep is shallow, superficial. Another word is trivial. You know what the word trivial means? It means like it's not important. It's not that important. It's not that big of a deal. It's got little value or it's got little significance. Like it's trivial. That's what it is. Uh, it's not important. Or it's meaningless or it's immature. The opposite of deep. Are you here? Okay. So, you know, it's interesting that in the, in the Bible, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, God talks about the world being superficial. All right? Now, I told you earlier that the world at its deepest level is shallow. Yeah. And you don't want to get caught up in all that mess, guys, out there. You see what's going on out there. And I know it can be very enticing because it's a spirit that's out there. It's a spirit. And that spirit, if you ain't strong in the Holy Spirit, that spirit will make you start thinking like that. This is why it also says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, to renew your mind. Let's see if we can pull that up, uh, Brother Jebby. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, watch this, any longer with its superficial values and superficial customs. But be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. Or focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. Are you here? Because this world, guys, thinks that having a relationship with God is trivial. This, this world says that having a relationship with God is of no value. It doesn't help you anymore. That's old. That's a long time ago. This world will try to influence you to think that having a relationship with God is shallow. Mm -hmm. Now listen to me closely. Why am I saying this? Because that's a spirit that will jump on us as believers if we don't connect to the word of God. Here's what I'm saying to you guys. Watch this. If you aren't, I don't want to say careful, but if you are not wise, you will find yourself shallow, superficial, and thinking that your relationship with God is trivial if you stay connected to the spirit of this world. Yeah. It's a spirit, guys. It's a spirit. That's why you'll step into a spirit of perversion. That's coming from the world. And I mean in all kinds of perversion, guys. A spirit of confusion. Y'all guys see that everywhere right now. A spirit of darkness. You know what I'm saying? A spirit of all that stuff. 
And God's here telling us right here, hey, don't you be conformed to that world. Why? Because it's superficial in nature. It's trivial out there. Amen. Come on. Now, there's nothing wrong. Watch this. There's nothing wrong with doing things that, that you like to do, golfing, fishing, sports, all that. That's good stuff. But that needs to be second. God always needs to be first. Because if all you do is trust in those things over here that are second, that's the trivial state. That's the superficial state. Okay, that's not deep. It's going to just keep you shallow and immature. Amen. So you take God and get deeper in God, then secondly, we'll take care of the rest of this stuff. And then now you can enjoy it because God said he said he gave us all things to enjoy. But God has to be first. Amen. Amen. All right. So the word right there is superficial customs of this world. In the Hebrew, it's it's called it's aeon, A-I-O-N. And it means spaces of time or present time. Superficial. A-I-O-N in the Hebrew. In the Aramaic, it actually means, and it looks like it's spelled like Alma, A-L-M-A, but it's got a little apostrophe right before the A, so it's kind of kind of like a little hesitation to it. It's like Alma, like that. Alma, right? It's not Alma, it's Alma, all right? You see what I'm saying? It's got a little, a little emphasis on that. And that word means to surround. Okay, watch this. So superficial customs. This world, you put it together, and it means to surround in time. Listen to me closely, guys. This world wants you to think you don't have time for that. Listen to me closely, because this world does have a time limit on it. It is going to die one day. See, but God is eternal. He never dies. Yeah. That's why this, that's why God's telling you, listen, man, do not. Watch what the, watch what the, one of the commandments said this. Do not make any earthly images. Do not, what's that, what's that, what's that commandment? Do not, come on, somebody help me. There it is. Do not make any graven images before you. Okay, you know what a graven image is? That's anything that can die. You hear? That means an animal. You don't make that a great, that you don't, you don't worship that. A statue, anything. The world can die yeah. and will one day. And God says, don't do it. Amen. Are you here? You see what I'm saying? Why? Because it's going to die. It's going to try to keep you in that time yeah. capsulation. When God's like, there is no time in me. I'm eternal. You're going to live forever. So you have to get used to living forever, not living in a time fashion yeah. where you don't think you have time for it, but you have all the time Amen. because you are an eternal being. <laughs> Praise God. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, so see, you're, you are functioning in the world, but not as the world. Amen. Okay. Michael Jackson, he had a song at one point said, we are the world. We are. Remember that song? We ain't the world, guys. We're the kingdom of God. Amen. Come on, somebody. So if you have that song in your playlist, delete it. Take it out. Don't be singing that no more. It had all my favorite singers in it. Lionel Richie. Those. They were all in there. Remember that big old group of people? <laughs> Praise God. Are y'all here? No? All right, let's, let's, let's go ahead and get a little deeper in this thing. All ready? All right, let's go to Ezekiel 47. Mm-hmm. So here Ezekiel, he is a man of God. He's one of the prophets that God would speak to. And, God, and, and Ezekiel got taken to this place by, and, 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 only, and the Bible only describes him as a man. But if you read into it, it was either an angel or it was Jesus himself. Y'all ready? Here we go. The man brought Ezekiel back to the entrance to the temple. Brought him back to the entrance to the temple. 
Say temple. Someone say church. And I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple. So there is a south side in heaven, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so it was the south side of the temple and south of the altar. Next line. Next verse. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside to the outer gate facing east. And the water was trickling from the south side. Next verse, verse 3. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, say measuring line, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. Ooh, here we go. So say ankle deep. Next line. And then he measured off another thousand cubits. And he led me through the water that was knee deep. There is an angel, or there was Jesus himself, leading us into a place known as the temple or the sanctuary or the church where you would find water. Praise God. And you could either be ankle deep if you wanted to, or you could be knee deep if you wanted to. Praise God. He measured off another thousand cubits, and he led me through that water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. Come on, on, somebody. And this was in church. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river. That I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in. You can't swim in ankle deep water. Some of you just be splashing water here. In the ground, you know what I'm saying? You can't swim in shallow water. You can't swim in knee deep water. You may be able to in waist deep water, but you got to go all the way in. Watch this. In the river that I could not cross because the water had risen, it was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. Next line, verse 6. Praise God. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? I'm asking you guys this morning, can you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. Next verse. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees. On which side, on each side of the river. So I said there was provision. And he said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region, region and goes down into the Araba, or however you say that, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Amen. Some of y'all salty. No, not here. Anyways. If there's people that come up in here and they're salty, when they come up into this house, it's going to get fresh. Come on, somebody better hear me up in this house. Uh. And he said to me, this water flows off. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. That means there's life. There will be large numbers of fish. Did you know what Jesus told the disciples? He said, y'all guys know how to fish for fish? He says, but follow me, and I'm going to teach you how to fish for men. Wherever the river flows, there will be large numbers of fish. Because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. Praise God. So where the river flows, everything will live. Come on, somebody. Y'all coming alive. We just sang a song about come alive in the... Well, no, what was it? The, this, the church is alive. Did we sing that this morning? Praise the Lord. The church is alive. Okay, praise the Lord. The church is alive. Amen. There's life here, guys. Yeah. Next line, verse 10. Fishermen will stand along the shore from En Gedi to En Eglaim. How do you say that? There will be places for spreading nets. Woo. The fish will be of many kinds like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. 
My gosh. But the swamps and the marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Verse, next line, verse 12. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fall, fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. What are we talking about here? Guys, listen to me. This, this, I was going to entitle this Deeper More Than Just Church. Yeah. Okay, let me just say this to you guys. You know the word church? It's a verb. It's a verb. It's an action. Watch this. You know when we say, hey, I'm going to church, you're literally saying, I'm going to do something. Yeah. You are churchers. You're churching. Are you here? Yeah. Church is not a building. Yeah. Church is what we do. We're the body of believers and we church. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. So when you come to the sanctuary, the church is alive, which is you. Praise God. Now all this begins to start happening, guys. Listen to me. You go ankle deep and you may be there. Praise God. You go knee deep and you may be there too. You go waist deep and you may be there. But I would suggest to you is you go deep. You go deep because in the deep, you'll find what you're looking for. Amen. It's in the deep, praise God. That's why it's important to receive the word of God when it's being preached. That's why it's important that when you, you take notes and then go home and you keep it going Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Because all you're doing is you're swimming, praise yeah. God, in that word. And it's producing healing, praise God. It's producing provision. It's producing all kinds of stuff in that Mediterranean sea. But people in the world has caused us to think, oh, I don't need to go to church today. I don't need to read the word of God today. Yeah, I don't have time for that. Okay. I just tell you what happened. Romans 12, 2 just came to pass in your life. You conform to this world and you let that world tell you you don't have time for that. And that spirit just took over. And now you're all frustrated with God because he ain't doing nothing. When God said, I already put everything you need on the inside of you, you got to let me unveil it. And it takes that word of God to go deep into your spirit because you got to let that word penetrate deep into your spirit because it's in that deep where you're going to find satisfaction, fulfillment. You ain't going to want to go back into this world. You ain't going to want to go back to that addiction. You ain't going to want to go back to abusing your wife. You ain't going to want to go back to lying and to cheating and none of that mess. You'll be stout, swimming, flowing. Come on, somebody. Amen? Amen. Mm -mm -mm. The world will try to keep you shallow in your faith. How? By distractions. Amen. It'll encourage excessive focus on social media, entertainment, and material possessions. It will... It will, it will try to make you shallow through secular values, promoting self-centeredness, individualism, and relativism over biblical principles. It will make you shallow by keeping you busy, fostering a culture of constant activity, leaving little time for spiritual reflection and growth. It will keep you shallow by misinformation, by spreading misleading or watered-down interpretations of the word. It'll, it'll keep you shallow by Satan's schemes, using temptation, doubt, and fear to undermine faith and discipleship. It'll keep you shallow by worldly wisdom, elevating human reasoning and intellect above divine wisdom. It'll keep you shallow by, by conformity, pressuring Christians or believers to blend in with the crowd rather than standing out as a follower of Christ. It'll keep you shallow by fear of per persecution, intimidating you into silence or compromise rather than boldly sharing your faith. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's good. You see that? It'll keep you shallow by materialism, focusing on earthly riches and success over eternal treasures and spiritual wealth. And the last thing to keep you shallow is by apathy. Apathy is encouraging a lukewarm, complacent attitude towards faith 
rather than a passionate pursuit of God. Are you hear what I'm saying? That's how the world keeps us shallow, by all that right there. There's 10 things. There's more. But those are 10 things right there that are very significant out there in the world that try to encapsulate us into that. Are you here? It says here, by recognizing these tactics, believers can be better equipped to resist the world's attempts to keep them shallow in their faith and instead deepen their relationship with God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, let me give you guys some, some, uh, some things to look at. For you to understand if you are ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, or all the way in. All right? Let me give you this. Ankle deep. That's the initial stage of faith. That's where you're just starting to explore Christianity. You have a basic understanding of Bible stories and verses. You attend church services occasionally. And you may not be fully committed or invested in your faith. That's where you're ankle deep. Knee deep is when you're growing in knowledge and understanding of Scripture. You begin to apply biblical principles to daily life. You regularly attend church and you participate in small groups like men's night, bliss gathering, or ladies leadership. All right? That's knee deep. Let me give you some more. Let me give you some more. You also start to develop a personal relationship with God. That's where you're knee deep. Waist deep. You demonstrate a deeper commitment to your faith. You engage in regular prayer, Bible study, and spiritual disciplines. You begin to share your faith with others, and you begin to serve in ministry. You experience spiritual growth and transformation. That's when you're waist deep. All right? Now, all the way in. When you're all the way in, you're fully surrendered and immersed in your faith. And you are completely walking by faith when you're all the way in. You exhibit a deep understanding of God's character and word. Praise God. Come on. You consistently seek God's guidance and wisdom. You don't look to man anymore. You're not seeking God for everything that you need. You're not dependent on the world. You're not dependent on humans. You're now totally dependent on him. You live a life of obedience, humility, and radical faith. And the last thing is, you are involved, or you may be involved in leadership, discipleship, or missions. Yes. Yes. That's all the way in. Guys, listen, that's how you understand what level of faith are you at. Are you ankle deep? Are you knee deep? Are you waist deep? Or are you all the way in? And, we're, and whatever level you're in, I'm just here to tell you, you can go deeper. Yes. Amen. God made it so that you can go deeper in your faith. Come on, somebody. Yes. Praise God. And listen to me, if, it, if, it, if church ain't that important to you, just know you're probably ankle deep or knee deep, okay? And that's okay. It's all right. Just choose to go different. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Now, I'm going to give you guys, last thing before we get out of here, I'm going to give you guys the satisfaction levels of each one. The satisfaction levels that you get from each one. Are you ready? Ankle deep. That's a low satisfaction. You may feel, you may feel unfulfilled. Searching for more. You have a limited understanding and experience of God's presence and power. You may feel disconnected from your faith and your spiritual growth. That's just ankle deep. That's the satisfaction level that you get. Knee deep. That's a moderate satisfaction. That means you're growing, but you may still struggle with doubts. You're experiencing some spiritual growth and connection with God, and you may, may still face challenges and doubts, but you're seeking answers and guidance. Come on, somebody. That's knee deep. Third one is waist deep. That's a high satisfaction. That's serving, sharing, and growing in faith. That means you're experiencing a deeper sense of purpose and fulfillment in your faith. That means you're seeing the impact of faith in your life and in the life of others. And the last one, all the way in, this was called profound satisfaction. Deep, deep satisfaction. So say, I want to get there. This is where you're fully surrendered, you're transformed, and you're at peace. Where nothing, nobody, I don't care what they say, can alter your walk with God. You don't compromise. You don't, you, you don't, you don't bite into whatever it is that they're trying to say. And then you, every single thing that's being spoken to you, it's all, it, it, you refer all to it by the word of God. 
You're experiencing a deep sense of unity and connection with God. You're living a life of purpose, joy, and contentment despite circumstances. That is when you're all the way in with the Lord. Wow, come on, somebody. Listen to me. Here's what I believe that's about to happen with us. God's walking you through this. And he's not judging your level. He's not. But he's expecting you to come deeper. Come deeper. Because that satisfaction you're looking for is deeper. That fulfillment you're looking for, come deeper. That joy that you're looking for, it's in the deep. That love that you're looking for, it's in the deeper. That healing, that breakthrough, that miracle, it's in the deeper. But watch, it's not out here. It's in here. Some of you guys, after today, in the name of Jesus, you're going to sense this conviction in your heart. It's going to say, I need to go deeper. I want to discover who I am in Christ. And at the same time, discover who Christ is in me. Because there's a time in life, guys, where you get to the point where you start learning more about, am I, am I, am I serving God for the world? Or am I serving the world for God? And only you can answer that for yourself. And once you figure that out, start seeing how your your life, now purpose begins to start functioning. And this is supernatural. This is supernatural, guys. This is not just something you can get if you're just being casual. You have to be intentional about what you're doing. Intentionally pray, intentionally read the word, intentionally come to church, intentionally. But don't make it a have to, make it I get to. I get to come to church because there's water flowing in the temple. And whatever's salty in my life, when I get there, it's going to become fresh. That brings that song to mind. She's fresh, fresh. I mean, I didn't want to sing it. Y'all fixing to hey. <laughs> exciting. You know, I was like, y'all fixing to get after it. But... Woo! Hey, guys, church is fresh Amen. and exciting. Yes. Faith. Yes. Because what faith does is takes you deeper. That's what it says right there, deeper. Faith will take you there. Yes. And how does faith come? By hearing, By hearing the word of God. And if you hear the word of God, then faith comes. And what does faith do? Take you deeper. Amen. Did you guys get that this morning? Can we give God a praise in the house? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet.